Welcome to worship this morning as we continue our series. Today's message title is This Church. Please be reminded of our annual meeting today following worship. And because we're beginning the meeting at 1215, there will be no sermon discussion. To give everyone to give everyone a break, get a sandwich, maybe get a drink, maybe go potty before our meeting starts at 1215. Looking forward to seeing as many faces as possible and hope our, you know, our screen is full of people. As you consider your offerings, uh, be reminded that our missions giving beginning today is our own Agape Fund and that those givings can be done through automatic transfer, e-transfer, or with an old-fashioned check. As we listen to the prelude, take this time to quiet yourself, to be in the presence of our God.
we find our call to worship this today from uh, in Matthew uh, uh, chapter 11 verses uh, 28 and 29 and and there we read come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls
Hear this prayer of confession. O Holy One, we call on, we call to you and name you as eternal, ever present, and boundless in love. Yet there are times, O God, when we fail to recognize you in the dailiness of our lives. Sometimes shame clenches tightly around our hearts and we hide our true feelings. Sometimes Fear makes us small, and we miss the chance to speak from our strength. Sometimes, doubt invades our hopefulness, and we degrade our own wisdom. Holy God, in the daily round from sunrise to sunset, remind us again of your holy presence hovering near us and in us. Free us from shame and self-doubt. Help us to see you in the moment-by-moment -moment possibilities. To live honestly, to act courageously, and to speak from our wisdom. <clears throat> and, from, and from Ephesians, we hear these words of assurance. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. The first scripture for this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. A lot of people were now becoming followers of the Lord. But some of the ones who spoke Greek started complaining about the one who spoke Aramaic. They complained that the Greek-speaking widows were not given their share when the food supplies were handed out each day. The Twelve Apostles called the whole group of followers together and said, We should not give up preaching God's message in order to serve tables. My friends, choose seven men who are respected and wise and filled with God's Spirit. We will put them in charge of these things. We can spend our time praying and serving God by preaching. This suggestion pleased everyone, and they began by choosing Stephen. He had great faith and was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they chose Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmesias, and also Nicholas, who worshipped with the Jews, with the Jewish people in Antioch. These men were brought to the apostles. Then the apostles prayed and placed their hands on the men to show that they had been chosen to do this work. God's message spread, and many more people in Jerusalem became followers even a large number of priests put their faith in the Lord.
don't seek treasures that soon will be gone But you died for me once and I know this is true So with all of my life I'm living for you Hear this offering prayer. Father God, accept our offerings given with grateful hearts and thankfulness for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We are grateful for this bounty that we may return a portion back to you. Amen. Our second scripture today is Psalm 39, and we're using the Darby translation today. And then that will be followed by our message titled, The Church. This is David speaking. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace for good and my sorrows were stirred. stirred. My heart burned within me, the fire kindled in my musing. I spoke with my tongue. Make, make me to know, God, my end and the message of my days. What it is, I shall know how frail I am. Behold that thou hast that. Behold that thou hast made my days as hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man, even the high placed, is altogether vanity. Verily, man walks in a vain show. Verily, they are disquieted in vain. He heaps up riches and knows not who shall gather them? 
And now, what I wait for, Lord, my hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions and make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened my mouth, for thou hast done it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When thou with rebukes does correct a man for iniquity, thou makes his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Hear my prayer, O God, and give ear unto my cry. Be not silent at my tears, for I am stranger with thee, a sojourner like all my fathers. Look away from me and let me recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Over the last several weeks, we have spent a lot of time coming to terms with what racism really means. Only by implication have we said anything about the church. But this being the day we conduct our annual meeting, I thought it quite appropriate to make that the focus for today. And the title today is very intentional, On Being Church. It is not On Being The Church. Well, some may think, here I go again, splitting words. I do it because words have power, and careless words have power too. The church can take us down a road I don't want to go. We can end up talking endlessly about an institution, an arm's length institution no less, out there, over there, that we can identify with or separate ourselves from whichever is most comfortable or convenient at the moment. Even the familiar words we find in Acts chapter 6 can take us in that direction. It tells us about the origin of an institution, how people in this new movement of God structured themselves. And we know why that structure was necessary. It was so that some who were, were free to preach the good news and so that others were looked after. And that has, I contend, become a comfortable and convenient way to look at uh, the church and to think about it as an institution, a structure. But what does the word church mean? It is a translation of a Greek word, ecclesia, and it means called out. Now, traditionally, that has come to mean called to be separate. I don't think I have to say much to convince you that that has been a fundamental message for followers of Jesus for a long time. But it does not mean called away. It does not mean called from. What does called out mean? Some of you may know that I have become somewhat of a CNN addict over the last few months. Last week, after several days of silence, Mar Margaret Taylor Greene got called out for some disgusting comments that she made by comparing being asked to wear a mask to being forced to wear the Star of David so that you could be identified as Jewish, rounded up during the Holocaust. Called out. There's another current illustration we might use for good benefit. It's the way we have come to talk about the LGBTQ persons. We say they are either closeted or they are out. They become outed or they out themselves. They are identified, or they de identify themselves. So going back to the title this morning, it becomes on being called out. It's about being identifiable. In a book titled Intercultural Church, 
Safwat Marzouk introduces a way to understand church that was a bit new to me, and I hope I can represent his thinking on the topic accurately. He is an associate professor of Old Testament at the Anabaptist Mennonite Biblical Seminary, and before that he was a pastor in Egypt. And rather than using the word church, he talks about God's project, a movement of the people of God. He asks us to think about the time before Christ and before what we traditionally think about as the beginning of the church. And Marzouk points out that there are two recurring themes that run through the stories of the ancestors of Israel. The one that we have focused on most, and the most obvious, is the theme of promise. The promise of a homeland, the promise of a Messiah. But he suggests that the other theme may be much more helpful in understanding who and what the people of God are. And the other theme is one of sojourner. The Old Testament people of God saw themselves as sojourners. And Jay pointed out that the word sojourning seldom appears in any of the modern translations. He had a hard time searching out a translation that did use that word. And I suggest that we have lost something very important by trying to be more reader-friendly in some of our current popular translations. Marzouk reminds us of Abraham's words to the Hittites in Canaan, recorded in Genesis 24. I am an alien residing among you. He reminds us of God's word to Isaac, reside in this land as an alien. The theme of the people of God as strangers, aliens, exiles, sojourners permeates the entire Old Testament and appears even in the New. In 1 Peter 2.11, Peter writes, Dear friends, you are foreigners and strangers on this earth, so I beg you not to surrender to those desires that fight against you. And I will admit it is very easy to follow those words and they would lead us into the idea of separation isolating ourselves from the world. But Marzouk doesn't leave us there. He gave an interesting title to the second chapter in his book. It reads, Strangers Ourselves, Reading the Bible as Sojourners. And he points out that the entire letter of 1 Peter is addressed to God's people who are scattered like foreigners in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Asia, and Bithynia. It's all about how you must live when you are not part of the prevailing social order. God's project, the people of God, aliens, sojourners, not part of the prevailing social order. As I said earlier, we are all quite familiar with those and the way that have come to interpret the word church. But the church got called out in this other sense behind the word. I am sure that some of you, maybe everyone, is aware of a certain Canadian news item this week. The graves of 215 Indigenous children were found on the grounds of a former residential school in British Columbia. And I hope that news was not lost on us because of the major focus on the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa massacre in 1921. Called out takes on its second possible meaning with a vengeance. There were 130 residential schools operated primarily by two Christian denominations across Canada. Four others were also involved. A total of 150,000 children were involved in what was designed to be 
the key aspect of colonization. And it continued until the last school was closed just 25 years ago, 1996. But most people don't know that the mortality rate in some of the schools reached as high as 60%. The 215 graves just discovered in B.C. account for a very small percentage of those lost and most grave sites are still unknown, deaths undocumented. There's an estimated 80,000 persons still living who attended those schools. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission described it as cultural suicide. It was clearly an attempt to destroy a culture, but it was people who died. I intend to come back to this topic and look at the culture that it was designed to destroy on another Sunday. But this is the other side of racism and the church being called out. Ecclesia. It is like the story that Nathan told to David that got David so angry about an injustice by a rich, powerful man when David turned the tables and said, You are the man. Ecclesia. On the one hand, Marzuk affirms that we are called out to be the people of God's movement, God's project. On the other hand, we are called out for the horrors that we commit or allow in the name of God. Both to me have a very sobering impact. But that is where we are when it comes to racism and the church. It is where we sojourn. A simple definition of a sojourner is a person who stays in one place for a period of time as a traveler or a guest. We thought a couple of weeks ago about living inside a system of institutionalized racism. What does it take? What do we need to be in this time and space as someone committed to God's project when humankind has some very different agendas? What does it take to know that we are, have gone along with another movement. I hesitate to use the word church in this context, but I believe the gathered community of believers, all sojourners, need one another. How often do we read in the letters that Paul wrote how he needed the support, the prayers, the simple knowledge that other people stood behind him and stood with him God's movement is not first choice. Jesus' way was about serving, not being served. It was living and giving for others, not for self. It was about forgiveness, not condemnation. And that is what we need when in our sore journeying we become trapped and become part of what is counter to God's movement. How often do we read in the history of the people of God that they were not to participate in what went on around them wherever they sojourned, in Egypt or Canaan or wherever they were for a time. And when they did, they were called to confession. The idea of a confessing church takes on an entirely new meaning for sojourners. Condemnation is overcome by forgiveness. One of the criticisms brought against the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was that they were making people feel guilty. If that is so, they did their job well. Without coming to that point in the story of racism and the church, remains incomplete and forgiveness that is not sought 
is forgiveness not found. Just where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer when we lose our way. I pray we'll find your love. I pray we'll find your love. And hold it in our hearts. And hold it in our hearts. When stars go out each night. When stars go out each night. Remind us where you are. Let this be our Shadows fill our day. Let shadows fill our day. Lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace. To a place where we'll be safe. A world where pain and sorrow. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being our good shepherd. We thank you for leading us, loving us, even giving up your life so that we might be restored to an intimate, everlasting fellowship with you, our creator. Because you are our shepherd, our protector, our defender, we despise Pardon me, we desire to share some of our needs with you. 
Listen with your hearts as we silently share our most private and personal needs. Talk to God about your work or school. Your friends, family, and our nation. Help us to help us in the growth process of our spirituality. Increase our own appreciation of who you are, how you love all of mankind, not just us or even those like us. Impress us that you impress us that you like you, we can love those who are very different from ourselves those whose skin is a different color, those whose culture and even values are different from ours, those whose religious convictions are different from ours, and those whose economic level are far below or are above ours. Because you love all, we ask you to help the oppressed of the earth the victims of hunger and racial discrimination and those whose individual freedoms are prohibited by political forces which initiate great injustice. Make us more sensitive to you and to one another, more conscious. Bring us to both Humility and boldness. Shepherd us in our own spiritual pilgrimage. Give us the courage to be merciful, the endurance to be faithful to those in our care, just as you are with each of us. It is in the name of the one true and everlasting God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. Be not dismayed whatever betide God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day.
God will take care of you. From Romans 15, verses 5 and 6, we read, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace.
Shoe